Hello friends, welcome back to my YouTube channel. So today we are going to talk about what makes games so realistic. And no, I'm not talking about graphics. I'm going to talk about physics. Now, when you think about physics in games, you might be probably thinking about just gravity, collisions, etc. But it goes further beyond that. Physics in video games calculates some very, very ca uh, complicated calculations such as collisions, um, explosions, you know, cloth physics, hair dynamics, etc, etc, and even fluid dynamics, like how water works in video games. And all of these things are extremely complicated. Now, you might have questioned yourself that where are you going to use these complicated physics formulas that you're going to learn in school? Well, game development actually allows you to use these actual formulas that you learned and enable them in the form of physics inside your game. Uh, also, I want to say one more thing is that just like your game engines, as your game engines are a piece of software that you use to make games, there is something known as a physics engine as well. A physics engine essentially is a software framework that has all these complicated calculations built in so that the game engines can also rely on these physics engine frameworks. One of the most popular physics engines out there is Nvidia's physics which actually allows uh, developers to do so much more. Games like Batman Arkham Asylum, Borderlands 2 have used this physics engine to simulate realistic effects, even cloth simulations. You might remember Batman's cape being so beautiful and looking so realistic. So this is all thanks to the physics engine that is responsible to make all of this happen. Now, what do you need to know in order to become a game developer in terms of physics? Well, you need to know how uh, you know these things work in general. You need to know all their calculations. And if you want to create your own physics engine, all the best to you. It's extremely complicated. You need to be a master in physics. However, if you just want to implement physics inside your game, you don't necessarily need to know all the complicated calculation. You just need to know the practical understanding. And obviously, even as a programmer, if you know how things work, you can just use these code snippets and make them uh, stitch together with each other and get your intended output. However, of course, you know, if you want to create like complicated simulations, you do need to have a core level understanding of physics on how all of these things work. Um, you know, pretty much so everything that you have read in the physics textbook can be used and applied to the game of your liking. So it really depends on what kind of game are you making? Are you making a game that requires heavy calculation, that requires maybe water simulation, that requires maybe, you know, your cloth to function in a particular way, or it requires your hair to react to the wind or particle effects or even bullets for that matter. So in all of these cases, you know, your momentum logic, your uh, how your rigid body works, how your, um, you know, two objects collide with each other, all of that practical knowledge needs to be known by you in order to become a good game developer. Also, uh, I have made a few side notes that uh, I'm going to be reading over here. Like we have uh, NVIDIA's physics. There is also one more physics engine called as the Havoc physics engine, which is another industry heavyweight, by the way. So Havoc has powered over 600 plus titles from Halo to Elder Scrolls 4 Oblivion. And it is especially known for its reliable collision detection and realistic ragdolls. And apart from that, if you were to look at your traditional uh, game engines as well, there is the Chaos Physics Engine in Unreal Engine 5 uh, for large scale destruction, as well as uh, for fluid simulations, uh, there is um, this framework called Flex uh, that can give you realistic liquids and soft body physics. There is also AMD's Femex framework for soft body dynamics like bending metal or deforming objects. So why do you even need these physics technologies? Because physics is what bridges the gap between a playable game and proper immersion. Imagine a racing game where your car uh, doesn't react to bumps or crashes. It would feel boring and you would just shut the game down, right? That is the reason why physics is super duper important. If you are actually looking forward to uh, learn what sort of physics is being used in video games, the best way to do it is just get started, open up the game engine and start building stuff, learn how bounciness works, learn what is friction, how it reacts with each other. And generally, I think that building games allows you to get a much deeper understanding of how physics works instead of just having that bookish knowledge. That bookish knowledge, by the way, is not going to go to waste at all. If you are good at that bookish knowledge and you can somehow transcend that into uh, you know, making your own games, you would be able to make some very, very cool experiences. Look at Kerbal Space Program. Look at No Man's Sky. All of these games that are 
inherently very very much dependent on physics and mathematics so you know don't think that all you, that physics learning has gone to waste don't think that that random equation that you learned is never going to be useful in your life if you are able to find out some bit of application for that you definitely will be able to make the most out of it and let me know down in the comment section what is your favorite games that have shown some very very interesting physics behaviors all right with that in mind if you like this video hit the like button if you're finding my channel for the first time hit the subscribe button and the bell icon so you don't miss out on my next videos my name is nikhil manalkar i'm a game developer by profession and on my channel i make videos around games and game development that's it for this video i'll see you in my next one until then take care